Hello and welcome to Latex Weekly, episode 4th August 2021. Latex Weekly is brought to you by Latex, your protection from tech ignorance. My name is Sean. This week's news, Valve making Steam Deck Windows 11 ready. Being released right at the beginning of Windows 11 release date, anticipation, users expect Steam Deck to be able to work with Windows 11. Definitely, right? I mean, if you splurge like 2,000 plus ringgit onto it and it runs Windows 10 and then, you know, two years later or one and a half years later, you don't get support. That's not good. So, Valve is working with AMD to make sure that happens. In order for any device to run Windows 11 well, a trusted platform module chip or TPM would be required. The TPM secures the computer better using an integrated cryptographic key which prevents hacks. So this is the kind of new security protocol that Windows 11 is placed and all devices that needs to run Windows 11 must have a TPM chip. Uh, TPM chips are usually either built into CPUs or motherboards. In this case, AMD is working to make sure that TPM is supported at a BIOS level on all Steam Decks. While Steam Deck will be loaded with Steam OS, which is a Linux distro, the devices will also not will also be able to support Windows. Being, a, being able to run Windows is very, very important for gamers because most games run Windows. And if you don't have Windows support, then Steam Deck loses three quarter of its value. Apple wants to scan iCloud for child abuse content. Last week, Apple announced that it will be releasing, releasing a feature that will automatically scan and flag all media in iCloud for child abuse. Other Cloud storage providers like Dropbox, Google, and Microsoft have already done so, but Apple previously provided an option for users to encrypt their content before even uploading them into the cloud. So which means that Apple used to say, we will not check what's in there, we will encrypt it so nobody will be able to see it because we pro protect your privacy and we protect your security. While this practice isn't new, uh, pro Apple users have been getting riled up by this move, saying it goes against the privacy and security that other companies don't have. It's something that Apple is pride, prided for and uh, now that they're going the other way around and people don't like it because it opens them up to uh, privacy issues. So um, let's talk about the, the tools first before we go on to what is this that people are complaining about. The new tools come into two parts, right? The first identifies and blurs sexually explicit images received by children in the Messages app and notifies a parent if a child aged 12 and younger decides to view and send such an image. The second scans users' images if they choose to upload them to iCloud. If detected, Apple will alert the authorities. So it's not just deleting them, they will alert the authorities on this. Uh, there have actually been many arguments against this move, especially because Apple is place, has placed itself into a corner of pro-privacy and security, and enabling this level of scan is akin to privacy invasion. Uh, so privacy groups and users aren't against the protection of children, against child abuse and all that. They are for child abuse, but what they're arguing is that there has to be another way rather than snooping into users' media. Because if they can do this today, they may escalate to doing other things tomorrow. So they are no longer different from you know who they claim to be different from, which are Microsoft and Google and Facebook. And Apple said they will not allow the system to detect anything else other than sexual abuse imagery and will refuse demands from governments to add non-CSAM, uh, which is uh, child abuse, child sexual abuse images into the list. So this comes down to the value of Apple's words. Uh, so this is a very subjective thing. Some people trust Apple to the T. Some people believe that Apple is selling something that they don't believe in in order to make money and in order to grow its user base. So I come from the, I come from the second camp, so I don't believe what Apple is saying. Whatever makes them money, they will do it. Uh, and <clears throat> people who believe that Apple supports privacy and security, uh, don't actually know what Apple is doing with all the data because they are not selling the data out, but they do have access to the data and they're using all this data to sell us ads and everything else. So in it, essentially, they are creating monopoly. So yeah, that's that. 
Windows 11 on Mac with Parallels 17. Parallels is on is the only way for Mac users on M1 chip to run Windows because Bootcam does not support those new chips. The release of Parallels 17 will let Mac users run Windows 11 too. Uh, there is a catch though. M1 users can only emulate ARM-based operating systems, which means you can only install Windows on ARM's x86 emulation. That is if you understand the idea of emulation plus Windows on ARM is actually miles and miles away from what you would get on a bootcamp, which is also miles and miles away from what you would actually get on a proper Windows machine. If your organization wants to run Windows on M1 Mac machines, Parallels would be the best option. Not exactly the best when it comes to performance, but the best that you have. A better one would still be able will be to get a Windows machine altogether. A cheaper, not as powerful Windows machine will probably run Windows better than Windows on Parallel. Uh, Parallel 17 is available at 80 US dollars a year or 100 US dollars for perpetual license. It doesn't include a Windows license, which will probably send you back um, around 600 ringgit if you don't already have Windows 10. New leaks on iPhones. As we lead up to the announcement of the iPhone 13 range, more and more leaks will surface over the coming weeks and months. This time, there are reports that the new phones will come out with video portrait mode, which is similar to the existing photo portrait with blurred background to simulate an artificial bokeh. Uh, there are also leaks suggesting that the new iPhones will come with always-on display, similar to the Apple Watch and also virtually all Android phones out there in the past few years. Apple is also bringing ProRes video support, which will bring higher resolution and more control over post-production of videos. This is similar to the ProRaw format that has been included in last year's iPhone lineup, which uh, ProRaw supports photos. So, uh, so these are a little bit of... Uh, tweaks and things that they will come in upgrades, but a lot of people also say that there won't be much improvements over the 12, and all, this, all the bumps will be quite minor, a bit here and there, uh, and the big upgrade will come next year. Razer's face mask goes to beta. Last year, I did say that Razer's attempt at a futuristic and fancy face mask would arrive too late, and that we wouldn't need it anymore. I was wrong, because we're still needing face mask, and kind of needed more now than ever. Uh, Razer's Project Hazel was a concept face mask that included an N95 filter, fancy lights, um, two kind of mic speakers, mic and speakers, which users can clearly speak out of and other people can hear it. So it, it essentially is battery powered and you need to charge it all the time. Uh, it also has a new name called the Zephyr. Actual design looks a little different from the original Project Hazel ones, which is, yeah, that's quite usual. The beta program for the Zephyr is planned for Q4 this year, and you can already sign up at Razer's site to be a tester today. Uh, I think it's only available for a few countries. So at this point, I think Razer needs to speed up approval and production of this mask before the world don't need masks anymore, because I still feel that if they're going to release it by Q2 next year, it probably be a bit too late. But I could be wrong. Who's to say? That's all for Latex Weekly this week. Latex Weekly is available in Aka FM, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Radio Public and more. Our full videos are available on YouTube and I post bits and clips on Instagram and Facebook. If you like Latex Weekly, it would really help if you could rate and review it on the podcast feed of your choice and on YouTube so more can discover it. Latex Weekly is looking for a regular co-host to bring more depth to the show. If you're interested, simply drop me an email at seanbqt, that is S-H-A-W-N, B for Bangkok, Q for Queensland, T for Thailand, at hotmail.com. That is all for Latex Weekly, episode 11th, August 2021. My name is Sean. See you next week. Stay safe. Au revoir.